David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a brand new pen from Visconti, which is very unique. It is the Visconti Asia Bamboo. What I'm going to do today is talk a bit about a recent Visconti event, go over the parts and features of the Asia Bamboo, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Visconti and Coles of London, their US distributor, for providing this pen on loan for review. Before I get to this new pen, I wanted to share a bit about a recent Visconti and SD Tabont event at the Truffet retail location in Greenville, South Carolina. The store is located in downtown Greenville and has a decent amount of square footage. It's a pretty large store. There's lots of room for display cases and they even have a, a corner of the shop dedicated to ink, uh, an ink nook, if you will. Uh, they have a really nice mural on the wall also. Uh, the couple behind Truffet is Chris and Kylie Henline, and here they are with their daughter. Uh, Coles of London brought along some interesting items to this event. Uh, here is the SD Toupant uh, from Paris with Love, and it is a fountain pen and lighter set, each with their own glass display case. Uh, here is the lighter. Uh, this display even has a little working street lamp. Uh, and then this is the fountain pen. I think it's cool how the display incorporates the pen and lighter into a Parisian cityscape. Uh, it's a unique way to display your pens as opposed to just having it sit in a box. There was a Visconti Leonardo da Vinci, which has a box with actual working gears in it. Uh, and one of my favorite things on display were these two new Opera Master models here. The one on the right is the Oceanic and the one on the left is the Turtle. Uh, the depth of the amber material on this turtle was amazing. And coming up in a few weeks, I will have a review of the Oceanic. Uh, so look forward to that coming up somewhat in the near future. Overall, it was a really fun event. It was nice to check out the store and great to meet folks in attendance. If you are in the Greenville, South Carolina area, I would recommend you swing by to pay Truffet a visit. It's very much worthwhile. Okay. Let's take a look at a pen. This is the Visconti Asia Bamboo. This pen is available in three kind of nature themed colors. This blue is meant to evoke the color of the sea. There is a green for plant life, and then there's a reddish brown symbolizing earth. Uh, this is a limited edition offering with 138 pens being produced of each color. The Asia Bamboo is a bit on the thin side, especially compared to Visconti designs as a whole. Um, while I can appreciate the addition of this unique design, uh, personally I would have preferred if this pen was a bit more girthier. Uh, the rings on the Asia Bamboo are all sterling silver, and the pen is entirely made from celluloid, uh, alternating from solid black to a stacked celluloid, uh, each with a slight concave element to it. So, you know, I do care for this stacked celluloid look. I have a Visconti Wall Street in my collection made from the same material. It's unique and very eye-catching. Uh, let's take a look at the cap. Uh, at the end of the cap, it has the Visconti logo and does utilize their My Pen system where you can trade out the insert for your initials, a gemstone, and things along those lines. Then we have the traditional arched Visconti clip. Uh, the transition between the cap and the barrel is in the middle of one of the black sections. Uh, while it's not manufactured to be hidden, I do feel it was the best place to locate the break. The barrel continues in the alternating sections and on the end of the barrel, there is a raised metal piece with the limited edition number of this pen. The cap twists off rather efficiently. It only requires one full turn to remove. And underneath we have this 23 karat palladium nib, which comes in fine, medium, or broad. Uh, the nib is a bit on the small side, but I feel that it's size appropriate given the sleek profile of this pen. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is metal and begins with two rings and angles up until you get to the cap threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable. And then there's a medium sized step up to the barrel. 
Now, I personally find this section to be a bit slick. It's rather thin, so for me that doesn't necessarily help. Uh, my inclination is to kind of pinch more than I typically would in order to maintain a decent grip on this pen, but I have found that for me, I actually need to do the opposite. I need to hold it rather loosely in order to have a, rather than having a, like a death grip on it. If I maintain a light grip, then I really don't have much issue with my grip slipping around. Um, for a thin pen, the Asia Bamboo has a decent amount of weight to it, mainly amount due to the amount of metal in this pen, but I don't find it to be over hefty and it does feel very balanced in the hand. Uh, the cap does not post, which is fine. I, I feel that having to incorporate some kind of posting mechanism into this pen would have kind of detracted from the overall aesthetics. The Asia Bamboo is a power filler, which is what Visconti calls their vacuum filling system. Uh, the pen has a single reservoir as opposed to some of their other models that use a double reservoir system. Um, I do care for the way that this piston mechanism has been incorporated into the material. During the writing sample, I'll give you a close up look at how that looks. The full retail price for the Visconti Asia Bamboo is $995. Uh, at authorized Visconti dealers, you will find it for 20% less, which brings the price down to just under $800. Uh, that price is in line with most other Visconti releases, uh, but I do feel it's on the high side in regard to the value cost for this specific pen. Uh, as mentioned earlier, for me, I think it just boils down to the fact that I wish this pen was a little bit larger, but I do care for the looks and appreciate the unique take on traditional bamboo design. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Visconti and Coles of London for the loan of this pen. Now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Visconti Asia Bamboo. First of all, here it is with the Visconti Wall Street that has that stacked celluloid. This is more of a gray. I just love the look of that stacked celluloid. Uh, and then here it is with a uh, Visconti Homo sapiens. And then finally, here it is. This is the Oceanic Opera Master, and you'll be seeing a review of that pen coming up somewhat soon. In regard to some non-Visconti pens, here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. Here it is with a Mont Blanc 146. And then here it is with an Aurora Optima. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Homo sapiens. Then here it is with the Mont Blanc 146. And then here it is with the Aurora Optima. Before I went into the writing sample, I wanted to show you a bit about how this uh, piston mechanism is incorporated. I just thought it looked better a little bit close up seeing it actually work. You unscrew the back here, and I just think that it's nice that the seam is right next to one of these silver bands, and so you really don't even see it. So what happens is you unscrew it, and then you can pull this piston out just like that, and then you insert it into the ink, compress it down like that, and then it sucks up the ink, and then you can seal it off. Now in regard to the writing sample, so here we have the Visconti Asia Bamboo. This is a, a medium 23 karat palladium nib, and the ink that I'm using here today is Visconti Blue. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, you know, it's a real solid, kind of well-saturated blue. Uh, here it is in comparison with a Lamy Blue, which isn't quite as saturated. And then something close to it is the Jeherban Louis XIV. 
This is the Visconti ink bottles. I think you've seen them before, but I think they're one of the cooler looking ink bottles. I just like how it filters all of the ink down here to the bottom, just so you can get every last drop out of here. Plus, it just looks cool. So uh, I really like these ink bottles. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. As I mentioned in the review, I do find myself having to kind of keep a looser grip on this pen, just because if I kind of have a death grip on here, then I have to kind of pinch a little bit too much on this thinner section. But if you just hold it lightly, I found that it works very well. You can get a decent amount of line variation out of this 23 karat palladium nib. There isn't too many of Visconti pens that are still having these nibs. Uh, I would anticipate that they were going to be uh, uh, fewer and fewer that you see out there. In regard to ink flow, I haven't had any issue in regard to that. In regard to reverse writing, I guess we'll do my initials for reverse writing. It's a little sharp, but there's no issue with that whatsoever. In regard to some fast writing, where I'll do some more initials. There's no issue whatsoever. I find the ink flow on this to be very, very solid. So here you have the Visconti Asia Bamboo. I think this is an interesting new addition to the Visconti lineup. I'm uh, really liking this stack celluloid, and I think that it's an interesting take on the traditional uh, bamboo version of the fountain pen. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.